Looking for magic cards? At flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10 while supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today I'll be showing you my run through of the Ixalan Treasure Constructed event that's happening right now, which gets access to the full art basic mountain from Unhinged, which is quite a reward. So I'll be playing the Cabal Pilgrim deck. For those that haven't seen the deck in action, I'll give you a brief overview of the deck also known as Chromatic Black. So the mana base of the deck consists of 21 basic swamps as well as 4 copies of Cabal Stronghold, which can start generating additional mana as soon as we have 5 or more swamps in play. And we've got the addition of Golo, Starless Pilgrim from N20 that can search up any land when it enters the battlefield, so it can search up swamps if we already have Cabal Strongholds or Cabal Strongholds if we have a bunch of swamps. And then in order to activate Golos' additional ability here of two and then one of each color, we have access to Chromatic Lantern, which lets us ramp and also use Golos' ability, as well as cast all sorts of sideboard cards that we can search up with our Mastermind's Acquisition, which can search up any card from the main deck or sideboard. And then we have a beautiful sideboard of 15 one-offs that we can search up, which we'll get to in a second. And then the rest of the deck is basically a mono-black control deck with some removal, card draw in the form of Dread Presence, which also plays great with all those basic swamps. So let's quickly run through the deck. At one mana we've got two Disfigures as cheap removal, and then two copies of the rest to take care of non-creature spells from the opponent's hand. We have three copies of Cast Down as our spot removal spell of choice, as well as four copies of Treasure Map, and Treasure Map is quite synergistic in the Treasure event as well. So this is basically the deck list I would normally play in Standard. I haven't really adjusted it for the Treasure Constructed event, but Treasure Map does get better in the Ixalan event as we can then still sacrifice additional treasures we get every turn to the Treasure Cove to draw additional cards, and those treasures can also make it easier to activate Golos' ability. And then other cards you might want to consider that get better with the event and the addition of treasure tokens besides Treasure Map are cards like Mayhem Devil, which deals 1 damage whenever a permanent is sacrificed. So if the opponent sacrifices a treasure, you get to deal 1 damage to any target, and if you sacrifice a treasure token, you get to deal 1 damage to any target. So that's a pretty solid card. Uh, Karn the Great Creator is also very good, since it prevents the opponent from sacrificing their treasure tokens, since those are activated abilities on artifacts, which Karn prevents. So if you can get a Karn down very early and protect it, it can shut down the advantage for the opponent. So there's a few of those cards that get a little bit better with the event, but playing a normal standard deck will also net you fine results, and that's what we kind of did with this deck. This is, again, the 75 I would play in a normal standard, just happens to have a bit of synergy in the constructed event with treasure map, which is why I chose to play it. Then at 3 mana we've got Cry of the Carnarium as one of our sweepers. Of course 4 copies of Chromatic Lantern which helps us with Golos and the sideboard cards, and also plays great with treasure map. We can go turn 2 treasure map, turn 3 Chromatic Lantern and then activate map right away, and we can play these cheap black 1 drops as well after playing Chromatic Lantern. Then at 4 mana we've got our 4 copies of Dread Presence, which whenever a swamp enters the battlefield under our control we can either draw a card, lose 1 life, or deal 2 damage to any target and gain 2 life. So also works great with Golos, since if we search up a swamp we get to trigger a Dread Presence. Then we've got the full 4 copies of Mastermind's Acquisition, that can search up any card from the main deck or sideboard, we'll get to take a look at the sideboard in just a second. Then 2 copies of Ritual Soot alongside Crown of the Carnarium as our sweeper, and then 2 copies of Rascal's Contempt to exile target creature or planeswalker, and also gain us 2 life. Then we've got our 4 copies of Golos, which can not only ramp us but then also provide a ton of advantage with the multicolor ability if we have a Chromatic Lantern or multiple treasure tokens in play. And finally, two copies of The Immortal Sun to shut down opposing planeswalkers and to draw us additional cards. And then we've already covered the mana base, four strongholds, 21 swamps. And then looking at the sideboard, let's uh, take a look over here. We've got one copy of Alpine Moon to shut down opposing lands like the Field of the Dead. Could also replace it with Blood Sun. I went with Alpine Moon as it's a bit cheaper. After playing some more games with it, maybe Blood Sun is the way to go, since it also shuts down the Blast Zone out of the Scapeshift deck, so they can no longer use Blast Zone to get rid of the Alpine Moon to unlock Field of the Dead. So Blood Sun might be a slight upgrade over Alpine Moon, even though it's a bit more expensive. Then we have the Elder Spell to deal with opposing Planeswalkers on the cheap. Often you can just get the Immortal Sun instead, but if you want to prevent a Planeswalker from going off and you don't have the mana to cast Immortal Sun, then sometimes you need Elder Spell. Then we've got a Pulse of Marasa, which can return a creature or land from a graveyard to its owner's hand and also gain a 6 life, so it comes up against the burn decks. And we can also return a Dread Presence from the graveyard back to our hand, for example. If there isn't a creature in our graveyard, 
put a creature in the opponent's graveyard, we can still cast a Pulse of Morasa, but we will be forced to return that creature to the opponent's hand, which is a drawback, but sometimes it's still the play. Then we've got an Ashok Dream Render, which does double duty against the graveyard decks, as well as preventing the search effects from decks like Scapeshift. We've got an Excellence Binding as a catch-all answer against decks that rely on a single card that we can potentially shut down. Joseph as Lich Knight is also one we get pretty often as a very powerful mana sink. If we can play it with Kicker, we get to make a whole bunch of zombie knights, which can close out the game very quickly. And if we don't have a Chromatic Lantern, sometimes we just want to get a finisher in black, and Joseph S is probably the best one we can get. Then we've got Massacre Girl as both a threat and a sweeper, and sometimes this lines up better as a sweeper than Crab the Cronarium or Ritual of Soot based on the toughness of the opponent's creatures. We've got a Bolas Citadel as a powerful card draw engine. We've got the Niv Mizzet Parun against decks with a lot of counter spells. Could also opt for like Shifting Ceratops. We've got a Star of Extinction to deal with all creatures and planeswalkers, can also blow up a land. We've got Plain White Celebration to get back all sorts of cards from the graveyard, can gain a ton of life against the burn decks, and also make a bunch of 2-2 tokens. We've got Zakama, Primal Calamity, which can do all sorts of things, blow up enchantments and artifacts, gain life, and deal damage. We've got Banefire, which is often the card we get to end the game on the spot. And finally we've got Finale of Glory to make a whole bunch of tokens if we've got a ton of mana, or Finale of Revelation to draw a ton of cards and also prevent decking. So the two cards I search up the most often are probably Banefire to just end the game on the spot, and then Joseph S if I don't have Chromatic Lantern, but still want to kind of get a finisher in play. So those are the two most important cards in the sideboard, and sometimes we just search up a card out of the main deck instead of the sideboard, but it's nice to have a lot of uh, different options when searching with Acquisition. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, on the play, I guess we can keep, we've got a sweeper against aggro decks and then some okay cards to follow up. It's a little on the slow side perhaps, but... Turn one Steamkin, that's terrifying. I think we'll need to wipe the board here. Double Dread Presence against Monorat could be quite nice if we can draw more swamps. So yeah, I could just go Dread Presence, Swamp, Kill, Steamkin. I could just save my treasures and play Mortal Sun. Nah, I think I kill Steamkin. Do we see a lightning strike or a wizard's lightning? Looks like wizard's lightning. Or secure. Fair enough. And the light up the stage as well. Cast down a fine pickup for now. I think I'll save my uh, treasures and probably just cast down a pyromancer right now. So they can't cast any Wizard's Lightnings for one mana. And they won't be able to play both two drops here. A land, so now I can play Mortal Sun. Or again I can go Dread Presence, kill Steamkin, which is probably the safer play. It's kind of like a weird... A ravenous Chupacabra here. Let's see if the Dread Presence survives. They could have Shock as well. Or another Skewer. Opponent is down to three cards in hand. Uh, 
And next turn we can do some fun things with this Mastermind's Acquisition. A Golos, great pickup too. Alright, so we're kind of doing it here. Get our stronghold. Play acquisition. And can kind of choose what we get here. I think Joseph's probably fine. Anything better? Could also get a Pulse of Morass out of the sideboard if we're afraid of getting burnt out, but we should be safe at 15 here. Alright, so the first game went pretty well. Potent did get stuck on 2 mana. And we had a pretty decent draw being able to deal with those early Steamkins. But uh, yeah, we'll see if we can win a couple more. So, how about this hand? Seems nice. We've got a nice mix of lands, including strongholds. We've got treasure map into lantern, which is kind of the dream start. Being on the play does seem quite relevant in this format. Since being on the play basically means you get two additional mana sources instead of just one. The fact that they took Immortal Sun probably implies they've got some Planeswalkers coming up. I guess I'll just run out to Chromatic Lantern before they thought Erasure that as well. Their hands pretty empty. We'll need to top deck well from here. Immortal Sun, probably one of our better draws. Dread Presence isn't bad. I probably should have played my Cabal Stronghold last turn, given Dread Presence. So we'll still have to kill Narset before we actually start drawing cards with the Presence, as it dies to Oath of Kaya. It's too bad. And the rest. I guess I'll keep that. Although we're kind of under pressure in terms of needing to find a card draw engine. 
Because their opponent's going to flip an Oscanta soon. But they might be holding a Teferi here. That we want to snipe. Or a Commander Dreadhorde, even worse. Yeah, I don't think we can let them keep that. Eh, just say go. Can flip treasure map. And at least treasure map plus treasures means we get to draw an additional card on the opponent's turn to get around Narset. Decides to bin a command. Interesting. Well, that's probably a decent. Alright, so... I want to play Golos, and I want to be able to sack a treasure to the treasure cove end of turn. And I could get a swamp, I could get a second stronghold. Given that I only have three swamps in play, probably I'm better off getting a swamp. So opponent will flip Oscanta here. So it's going to be Oscanta versus Treasure Cove, essentially. Finds another Teferi. That's more like it. At least we're still allowed to sack a treasure to the Treasure Cove with Teferi in play. It's acquisition. Can I acquisition for Immortal Sun and play it? Should be able to. Question is, is that the best we can do? Could also keep acquisition to like set up some fun stuff out of the sideboard. Given that we have Chromatic Lantern Golos. Potent probably has some answers in their deck for Immortal Sun, like 2 mana D Spark that they could find with Oscanta. But it seems worth it to try this now. I guess I won't stack any additional treasures here. Alright, I guess our opponent can beat the Immortal Sun. Sweet. So this hand's good against aggro decks, not so good against control decks necessarily. A bit land light. I think I'll try it still. Turn one island. So yeah, we'll play the Stronghold. I don't think I'd play the Dread Presence yet. Don't want to waste our treasures when we can't get value from Dread Presence right away. And by playing Stronghold we make sure we keep some Swamps in hand for the Dread Presence. Which uh, seems important. Growth Spiral. Field of the Dead. This is just a regular old Scape Shift. Looks like it. Oh no, Teferi to bounce or treasure token. That's rude. Alright, oh, I guess we should have just sacrificed the treasure token in response to the Teferi bounce. Part of the plan is to just try and get this Immortal Sun in play as soon as possible. 
just so we can draw additional cards, find a Mastermind's Acquisition for Alpine Moon, which can help against the Field of the Dead. I could just go Dread Presence, Kill Teferi, although it doesn't seem super important to kill it right away. could just play Swamp Go. I think I'll just pass. Go. All right, so I get to play Mortal Sun. And then we need to find an acquisition as soon as possible here. Unless the opponent has Deputy of Detention, they shouldn't have answers for Immortal Sun. And even if they do have Deputy, we have multiple removal spells we can cast. And if they do Scapeshift here, we at least have a Ritual of Suits at the ready to clean them up. Second Temple, so no zombies yet. Alright, so let's start drawing some additional cards with the Dread Presence. And then probably just cast down the Hydroid. Suppose we could have played both copies of Dread Presence into a land at the cost of the treasures. The roots. But I might want to keep the treasures to do some cool stuff with our uh, acquisition, since we do need some colored mana for some of our sideboard options. Alright, so opponent gets their first batch of zombie tokens. Another one. Alright, so Ritual of Sud is looking good. So next turn I can go Dread Presence into Swamp, see what we draw of the two triggers, and then still Ritual of Sud, which will spare the Dread Presence and clean up everything else. Cry also works. Alright, so. And draw a card, draw a card. Still no Mastermind's Acquisition. Is there a reason to cry or ritual here? Ritual can kill Krasis, but we do have double contempt for Krasis. If I cry right now, I can attack for two, the Grazer doesn't die. If I ritual, then we deal with the Grazer as well, and we attack for four. It's close. I think I'll Ritual. And putting the opponent to 18 probably doesn't matter too much in the grand scheme of things. Killing the fairy so we get access to instant speed. Cards, does that matter in any way? Not really. I think I'll just go face. I guess it matters a little bit, like if they Deputy of Detention, the Immortal Sun, I wouldn't be able to kill the Deputy at instant speed to get the extra draw from Immortal Sun. So that's kind of the interaction I'm thinking of that could matter. I mean, I can also just replay another Teferi, just for the static ability. Let's just go face. Yeah, we can also kill Teferi with a trigger. Although we'll definitely need to draw 
cards first here. It's your opponent with escape shifts. That's fine. We should be able to find an answer soon enough here. With all these extra draw steps, we get an extra draw from a mortal sun, two extra draws from Dread Presence. We've got four acquisitions in the deck. And in the meantime, the sweepers keep us alive. I think in a normal standard game without all these treasures, the scapeshift deck could uh, kind of run away with the game faster than we can kind of answer it sometimes. In this treasure format, I feel like it benefits us more than it benefits the opponent, since they're already trying to ramp, but now we just get free ramp thanks to the treasures to kind of make up for it and keep pace with the opponent. Blast Zone could potentially do some things. A Lantern could help us out if we find Golos. Alright, so we'll start by drawing some cards. Alright, so still nothing. Well, could be in trouble if our opponent makes a bunch more zombies next turn. Maybe I should just contempt Teferi, just in case. Since I have a bunch of spot removal for Krasis anyway. Alright, there's Golos. Perfect, so... No acquisition yet, but we'll see if we can find one here. Still nothing, so I can play Golos. Probably getting another Inquisition or uh, getting another Stronghold. Could have also played Dread Presence and then played Golos, get Swamp, draw three cards. But I'm guessing with the Golos activation, we'll probably be able to find what we need. Alright, there's the acquisition. So let's get an Alpine Moon. And that should lock things up since we have Immortal Sun shutting down to Ferry. And then Alpine Moon shuts down the. Oh, never mind. They do have the Blast Zone as well. So that deals with the Alpine Moon. Hmm. Opponent is at 16. I could also just get a Banefire and try and burn them out. So I don't necessarily need to get Alpine Moon when you have a Blast Zone in play. If I play Alpine Moon, I need to name a non-basic land. If it was Blood's Sun, then I could shut down both lands at once. I think I'll just grab a Banefire here. And then... Probably want to preserve... Some treasures, but I'm fine running out. Dread Presence. They might use their uh, Blast Zone on 4 to get rid of all the Dread Presences, which is fine by me. And then I can maybe still get Alpine Moon after all, we'll see. I guess I'll cast a Free Cry. Yeah, with double Cabal Stronghold and this many Swamps, Banefire should just be lethal. But if it weren't for Blast Zone, Alpine Moon could work. I guess I missed out on an attack for 4 here. Oh well. Point also has Field of Ruins, so that could blow up one of the Cabal Strongholds, although then we get a bunch of Swamps for Dread Presence, so they probably want to Blast Zone on 4 to kill Dread Presence, and then Field of Ruin, the Cabal Stronghold, will be left with 1 Stronghold, 8 Swamps. It's probably still enough mana to kill them. We'll see. But yeah, they should have been at 12 if we cast the Cry and then attacked. Although, 
If we did that, then they would have uh, cast a growth spiral to make some zombies at instant speed. So I guess they could have ambushed the dread presences. So that would not necessarily have been great. I think we'll be fine. Alright, so they do activate Field of Ruin right now, which is questionable. I think I'll just go face here. Could have also done two to Teferi to still get access to some of our instant speed removal, should we be afraid of dying. Alright, Blast Zone goes up to four. Discard a Lance. But these zombies aren't lethal by themselves. And then should still have enough for a lethal Banefire here. So I guess if our opponent had a second Grow Spiral, we could have ended up dying. Alright, so just a good old Bane Fire to the face. Fifteen should do. Alright, so got a little bit messy towards the end there. Probably should have thought about things a bit more carefully before going for the acquisition, but uh, we got there in the end. Alright, so far so good. Beat a nice variety of decks. Control, aggro and combo. Alright, so we're on the play, and yeah, the sand seems fine. Early Lantern into copies of Golos to find our strongholds and drag presence to maybe draw some cards. Turn 1 Sky Marcher Aspirants, so it could be Mono White, could be Vampires. I think I just like Lantern. Keep up this figure. Am I gonna disfigure the aspirant? I think I'll wait at least one turn here to see what else they play. If they play like an Adonto Vanguard, I might want to disfigure that instead. And it is black white. Ooh, call to the feast. Alright, I guess I'm fine disfiguring the aspirant then. Keeping this figure for like a Legion Lieutenant is definitely reasonable too. And the rest can check out their hand, so I can go Dread Presence, play a Swamp, draw cards, and then the rest them. Legion's hand, and their hand is just an Odonto Vanguard here. So things are looking up. Even if they top deck a Legion Lieutenant, they can't really attack past the Dread Presence easily. Mortify was a decent pickup for the opponent. Alright, so now the game is not over yet. Otherwise, Golos could have picked up additional swamps to go with the Dread Presence. So now what? Probably just Golos get Cabal Stronghold. Anything I want to Mastermind's acquisition for, I think we can probably wait. And then uh, we can kind of mastermind's acquisition based on what the opponent presents. Cry of the Carnarium looks pretty good on this board, for example. 
Although they could pump the knights out of range. So Cry kills the Vanguard, whereas Ritual kills the Knight of Abel Legion. Could also just play Chromatic Lantern plus map and then kind of wait a turn before pulling the trigger. I could get a Massacre Girl out of the sideboard as well, which would clean up everything. Uh, although I guess that also kills Golos. Mm, I think I'll wait a turn. Just go Lantern into map. We shouldn't be taking too much damage. Next turn. We're fine if Golos dies. I could even consider blocking the knights. Alright, I can. That was a good one. So... Let's see here. Opponent takes two. So we're definitely getting some sort of sweeper. I guess by blocking Knight of Ebon Legion I force them to pump so they can't activate Icon instead. If I block Adanto Vanguard I force them to take four damage. This seems fine. And then I can just get a Massacre Girl next... Eh, I guess it no longer works since they don't have a one toughness creature in play. So I guess we'll have to get some sweeper like a Cry or Ritual. Either way they get to save one creature that way. Not a Golos, probably not necessary. So, yeah, definitely need to get a sweeper. I guess we're in a bit of trouble here since the Adanta Vanguard still threatens quite a bit of damage. Cry doesn't kill the Knight of Abel Legion, so that puts us dead on board. So I guess Ritual of Soot is the only logical answer. Alright, and then can I still play something else afterwards? I don't think I can. I guess we can find like a contempt as well for the Adanto Vanguard at some points. So the Icon top deck meant our opponent could deal quite a bit of damage last turn. But hopefully we can still take over the game here. End of turn I can scry with map. Golos gives us at least one blocker for the Adanto Vanguard. Second Adanto Vanguard is definitely an issue, so now I guess we need to dig for a Cry of the Carnarium. So we're down to two. Another acquisition, Crime of the Carnarium. Those are the types of cards we are looking for. Cast down doesn't do it. And Dread Presence. Does that keep us alive? I can go Dread Presence into Golos, search up a swamp, kill the Vampire, and I guess we'll have two blockers, so we're technically not dead. And then next turn... We can maybe spin the wheel on Golos to try and find something. Yep, 
If our opponent finds a removal spell, we're dead. They've already gone through a Mortify. Finds a Knight of Avon Legion. Yeah, this Icon of Ancestry has proven to be quite problematic since it just keeps drawing the opponent more and more cards when they were kind of empty-handed. Definitely a nice mana sink in this format. Alright. At least I didn't find the Legion Lieutenant, so Golos gets to survive. And we get to spin the wheel. Cast down, that's an answer for Knight. So yeah, let's uh, see what goals gets. Let's just activate uh, goals like this first. Well, that's a brick. Am I just dead now? I guess I still get a draw up with Cove. And a lantern, that's not gonna do it, so yeah, we're dead. Pretty brutal miss here on Golos. I get to kill knights. Could have activated Golos again. Let's see, I had uh, two black mana floating, and then I hadn't played land yet. So let's see, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I guess I could have activated Golos a second time. That probably would have been better than just drawing one card. Yeah, that might have cost us. A uh, second icon. Kind of curious to see what the uh, next cards were gonna be here. Whether or not we would have uh, Drawn one of our answers. Alright, so I didn't play perfectly this game. Still a close one. Alright, I think we've got a keeper. Let's see what we're up against. Untapped Blood Crypts. I was about to say, are we gonna get butchered? And there it is. Turn 1 Dreadhorde Butcher, pretty effective. Don't think we want a Ritual of Soot, sacking both treasures there. Can probably wait. Another Butcher. Alright, well, probably forced to Ritual now. Do they have some Hand Disruption? Duress, ouch. Yeah, that's pretty effective. Takes away a ritual. I can still go Dread Presence into a Swamp to kill the Tutu Butcher. Swamp on top. I think I bottomed that for now. So if I scry an upkeep, I can no longer go Dread Presence into Swamp. So I think I'll just take my draw step. And then I can still activate Treasure Map end of turn. I may or may not trade Red Presence for Butcher. It's a close decision. 
A rampage, sacking a creature. So I guess we can trade. Seeing the new animation on Angra's Rampage for the first time. And a Kaya's Ghost Form. Fair enough. So even Vraska's Contempt means that the Butcher comes back. Immortal Sun, probably too slow here. I'll keep the land just so we don't have to sack all the treasures to play Golos. And hope that Golos survives. I think I saved the treasures. So, let's see. I guess I still won't be able to actually activate Golos with only two treasures in play or three treasures in play. But I think I'll still save them for the treasure cove. Right, let's hope uh, Golos gets to block. I think I'm forced to block here. Mayhem Devil pretty good in this format since sacking treasures deals damage. So they get to finish off Golos. Ah, opponent's got some uh, sweet synergies going. And another Kaya's Ghost Form. Alright, we're in trouble. Lantern plus Golos is nice. I think I get another swamp for now. This is gonna hurt. So I basically can't block the Dreadhorde Butcher, otherwise they can finish off Golos with the treasure token and the damage from Mayhem Devil. I can block Mayhem Devil. Ooh, shock. Well, there goes Golos. Butcher 5-5. Five five. And another ghost form. Alright. An acquisition would do nicely. Another goals. Is it too little too late? So I guess I'll see first what we draw. Just a swamp. Pretty close to activating uh, Golos here. Sadly, this comes into play tapped. So even if I jump Butcher, they can sack two treasures and we take five. Well, that was a pretty close game. Point with a very interesting take on uh, red-black aggro here. Alright, so we're on the play. Fine opening hand. Uh, but weak against control, I guess, with double cast down. This hand would have been quite good against our previous opponent. Uh, 
probably lead with strongholds, given the dread presence. Temple, so... Could technically be scape shift, in which case his hand is not particularly great. And just green black of some variety. And a Jade Light Ranger. It seems like I haven't seen Jade Light in a hot minute here. It's kind of refreshing, which is a weird thing to say. Alright, so I can go Dread Presence into Swamp Kill Jade Light. Got good answers to this uh, Doom Whisper, so I'm not too concerned. Ooh, Yarok. Well, good thing we have a Contempt, since Cast Down would not have worked. Immortal Sun. Can I let Yarok survive for a turn? That's pretty risky. Probably just need to kill it and then wait a turn on the Mortal Sun. Opponent could easily have answers for Immortal Sun, hopefully they don't. Alright, Risen Reef makes sense. Definitely not above using cast down on the Risen Reef. Alright. So here we could go Immortal Sun and attack for three or four. Gonna keep cast down as an answer for Doom Whisper. Cavalier. That's fine. And we see a Bolas of Citadel milled in the graveyard, so if we kill Cavalier, they can get that back. Draw card first. Right, so we've got a lot of mana, got some removal, just need to draw kind of our payoff cards. So do I bother killing this Cavalier? I mean, our opponent is at 11, so who knows if they even want to get back Citadel. I guess they have a Wild Growth Walker, so if we don't Ritual of Sutat, then... Um, I think my play is going to be cast down the Cavalier, see what they keep on top. Although I guess they could also get Trophy back to kill Immortal Sun, which would be a bummer. I think I do still kill Cavalier, and then kind of see what they want to do here. If they get Citadel, they might get it under the assumption that Wild Growth Walker lives, but now I can Ritual, attack for 4, put them to 7, and now Citadel doesn't look great. Opponent does go for the conservative uh, play here, gets trophy. That's fine. If they trophy Mortal Sun, we get a swamp to trigger Dread Presence. And if they trophy Dread Presence, we still have a Mortal Sun. So either way is fine for me. Well, 
Although we are out of answers for this Doom Whisper now. Uh, it just goes for the Doom Whisper, that's fine. Uh, they have a land as well. But they let us draw with uh, Immortal Sun, so... Alright, that should do the job. Although, strangely enough, we have triple Stronghold, so we actually don't get to make extra mana with them. And we also don't get to trigger Drunk Presence, but I can get a Banefire out of the sideboard. And that should just kill them here. It's kind of lame how often you get Banefire with this deck when there's so many other sweet options you can get instead. But it's often just the correct play. Alright, Trophy's Dread Presence, sure. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright. So how many more wins do we need to get? It looks like we're uh, pretty close here. Alright, let's keep on going. Alright, I guess I'll keep triple drunk presence. Play a stronghold first. And I think I save the treasure map. And try and play turn two. This is indeed a dreadful hand, you're not wrong. Another Temple of Malady. Definitely looking forward to a standard where the turn one play is Temple instead of, let's say, uh, Lanner Elves or some white one drop or a red one drop and kind of take it slow for a while. Quadruple Dread Presence. Now it's really a dreadful hand. So we probably won't scry an upkeep. Do I scry end of turn is a question. So if I scry end of turn... Untap... Not sure if I'm supposed to scry here. Alright, search for Ascanta. I guess it's probably fine to scry. Chart a course, maybe some sort of reanimator deck. Yep, as we see Drunkus has discarded. Well, if they reanimate that, we're in trouble. Yeah, Reanimator also probably gets quite a boost in this format, just being a lot faster, helping with the uh, different mana costs. Swamp, I guess we want to keep Swamp. So what do we need to find here? Uh, probably Acquisition for some Graveyard Hates. This figure's probably not gonna cut it. Tyrant Scorn to bounce Dread Presence. It's actually pretty effective when we're holding a bunch more of them. Don't think I want Cabal Stronghold number two when we don't have a ton of swamps in play. And probably not gonna scry an upkeep. Alright, the rest was good. So get to Dread Presence, play Swamp, draw a card and then the rest. Or flip Treasure Map and then the rest. Which might be even better. Now do I want Strongholds? Hmm, still didn't think I do. See if we can snipe maybe a bond here. Yeah, there's a bond of revival. And the Tamyo. I mean we need to get bond, otherwise Dracoseth is gonna kill us. But Tamyo means he can get back bonds. So we could be in a bit of trouble here. Need a Mastermind's Acquisition for Ashok. Like 
who would love for the opponent to plus time you, but they're just gonna get bond right away. Which makes sense. Alright, so we'll have a bit of a decision here. And the rest, well, that does it. Since we can kill Tamio and then the rest. So that was a great pickup. Yeah, I want to make sure to kill Tamio first. And there's Acquisition. Can't Acquisition for Ashok right now, but we can next turn. So if we can dodge our opponent, finding a reanimation spell off the top will be in great shape. All stories must end. All right, let's take bonds. And yeah, I think I just pass a turn. Not sure if I'm drawing a card with a treasure cove or if I want a mana next turn, we'll see. All right, so please. No bond this turn, just one turn. They could chart a course into it still. So they get to see a couple of new cards. They could even Ascanta into a bond. But it has to be bonds, another reanimation spell we can probably handle. Goes for a chart, discards land. Did they find it? Not Ascanta, great. So it looks like we're safe. And do I draw a card here? It's probably fine. All right, let's uh, acquire an Ashok, shall we? That was not a Masterminds acquisition. Whoops. <laughs> Wrong for mana black card. Um, hmm. Well, that's awkward. <laughs> uh, all right, well, that's gonna cost us dearly. Hmm, so I don't have the mana to Ashok anymore. I guess we'll attack for now. I was too busy tapping and untapping my Cabal Stronghold that I, uh, in my peripheral vision, cast the wrong card here. Hmm, hopefully it doesn't cost us, but yeah. That was a pretty big mistake. The problem here is if I acquisition for Ashiok and they reanimate Dracoseth, I need an answer for Dracoseth. So I might want to keep this in case we need to kill Dracoseth instead. I guess I'll wait. All right, well, that was uh, not according to plan. I guess we're making it more exciting. Can our opponent find another bond? They get a lot of looks at it, so they probably will. We'll lose both copies of Dread Presence, take 11. Tamio can get back bonds. Do they have the mana to cast it, though? They might be one short, although I guess they can just have a land and then cast it. And yeah, there's Bond of Revival, so this could have been avoided. <laughs> uh. All right, let's see if we can still win. I could disfigure to prevent um, two damage. Probably not needed. Cast Tamiyo, sure. Lands. 
land's probably fine since that's extra mana for Cabal Strongholds. So do they have any other creature to reanimate? They don't. So if I just deal with this Drunkoseth, then we're actually fine. Alright, so let's uh, think about our sequencing here. So this taps for one additional mana, essentially. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I guess I'll be one short of going Dread Presence, Acquisition and Vraska's Contempt. So I guess I just get Vraska's Contempt. I guess I can scry first to see what's on top. In case there's a Contempt, I don't need to Acquisition for it. It's possible there's a card in the sideboard I could get instead, but this should work just fine. Alright. So at least with Ascanta they can find the creature to reanimate. So they would have to mill it with Tamiya first, which is definitely possible. They could get back, or they could find another reanimation spell with Ascanta, mill a creature with Tamiya and kill us. But as it sits, there's nothing really worth reanimating in the graveyard. Opponent is at 8, so Dread Presence triggers can kill them pretty quickly, finds another bond. Tamiya pluses. And what are we naming? Name is Chart of Course, Mills, some more cards. Let's remember to flip the treasure map. I guess Swamp is actually not bad with double Dread Presence in hand. Alright, so... What's our sequencing here? I could play Immortal Sun, and then... Can I still play Double Dread Presence and then Swamp? I guess I can. I think I'm just going face here. Also maybe puts us out of Drunkoseth range. This way if we draw another Swamp with both creatures in play we can just burn our opponent out next turn. I guess this figure means we are safe from Drunkoseth. Since we would go gain 4 here and then this figure means that Drunkoseth puts us to 2. And now with Immortal Sun we don't need to deal with Tamiyo anymore. It does mean that we can make him discard, but that's fine. Alright, let's see if we manage to win this one despite the massive punt. Getting Ashok would have been sweet, but I probably would have scooped to that. But uh, keeping the suspense here... I guess that makes for good television. What does Ascanta get? Thought Erasure. Alright, that's fine. They are looking at the graveyard, but there's no creature really worth reanimating. Again, if they get a Lich, I can also disfigure it to prevent them gaining a life. A Ritual of Soot doesn't kill Dread Presence. Opponent keeps the card on top. And then plays Temple. And scoops it up. Oof, nice. Who needs Ashok anyway? Alright, and just like that we get our nice basic full art mountain. Alright, that was fun. Time to update all our decks that uh, play mountains with the new art.
So yeah, that's going to be it for me today. Thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.